Howdy once again, it's Tubal Keen, and this is tips number 479, and it's an introduction to these direct current motors, how I'm going to use them, and some eventual videos here on mounting these on a drill press and on a bandsaw. So this is a whole series of videos, and if you watched the last video, which was 478, you saw me make the base for this Baldor DC motor that was missing, and I copied off of the other one. So. Uh, that aside, let me talk about these DC motors and uh, how I'm going to put them to use. I've had these direct current Balder motors for many years and I have not used them because I burnt up the controller on one of them. This was mounted on a drill press for many years, this actual one here, and I'm going to remount it on that same drill press with a different controller and that's pretty much what uh, the next video will be about. But here's the tag so you can see that these are three-quarter horse motors and uh, there's the model number and all of that. I don't think anybody would care but uh, and the voltage and the model, I guess I said model number. So both of these motors are identical. And this is the wiring diagram here to change the, the voltage and uh, uh, and all of that because there's a lot of wires sticking out of this uh, little uh, junction box here So I'll show you on the other one here in just a second and these motors have a 5 8 shaft they are sealed motors uh, and externally Cooled with a fan so they're really nice motors, but they're quite heavy now remember that you can use a DC motor uh, with a controller and vary the speed of it now you can't do that with a AC motor other than with a a variable frequency drive and I did have a video on that but I'm not going to talk about that at all but uh, I've been warned that I won't get good torque on these at low speed and I, I guess that's true but that's what this series of videos is all about is drilling and and uh, sawing and at low speeds getting away from that high speed woodworking stuff that uh, they cram down our throats but the metal workers need slower speeds and if you work with metal you know that so you don't burn up your cutting tools. I'm in the process of doing some rewiring here because the four conductor cord here between the motor and the control is only 12 inches long which is way too short so I'm using, uh, we're going to mount this longer uh, cord on there. I, I had trouble finding four conductor cords around here at least at Ace Hardware so I'm kind of piecing it together. I could run two two conductor wires but uh, Okay, that's, that's what I'm doing here. Let me talk a little bit about these controls now. The controllers that were on uh, the other one, the older controllers, I suppose this is from the 60s or 70s, but look at how massive they are compared to a more modern one. And even this one is from 1989. So in a recent video, you know, look at that inside. A big aluminum case. No wonder they cost a fortune. But I had a, a temporary video, uh, a plea for help, and I did not answer any of those emails that has taken off now, but I gleaned much information from the contributors, uh, and I thank you very much for that because I, uh, I now know how to use these, and like I said, I got, I think, six of these at, a, at an auction. They had no value because uh, they were just in a pile, and I left most of them lay. I didn't have room to even carry them, but they seemed to work okay. They did not initially, but let me talk about that. I worked for a long time on this, and I was quite discouraged, and there's excellent uh, diagrams and information in here, but uh, I could not get a full range of speeds out. You know, the motors would start and they would run up to, I don't know, and I checked them with a, with a tachometer, uh, perhaps uh, 800 RPM or something like that. And several of you told me that there is a pot, I think you call them a pot here, the one that says uh, maximum there was not set on maximum so once I put a screwdriver in there and rotated that to the to the maximum now the motors come up to full speed so that's what it was all about and these are if you look right here 220 or 110 so I got this little switch set at, at 110 and there's the control there is no reversing switch on there that's just uh, I wish it had one actually and I, I suppose I could do that. I, I don't intend to at this time. But I have several of these, as I said, 
and so there's one on each of the motors. The one motor is going to be dedicated to the drill press and the other one will be dedicated in future videos to converting at least temporarily my delta band saws the ubiquitous delta rockwell 14 inch wood cutting band saw into a metal cutting band saw because there, there's a strong need for that people need a metal cutting band saw they are not really available at least not at a modest cost so watch for those videos coming up see if you can read this little notation here that was inside each one of these. They came loose and they're just uh, rattling around in the case, but there is a small resistor right here, a plug-in resistor, and you have to have the correct one for the horsepower of the motor, and I thought, where on earth am I going to get one of those? They look like this. I know I can't get them downtown here, and it has to be the right value so I looked on the internet and I think somebody told me that look on the internet and from this company here in uh, Tennessee I ordered one and then a, a week later or I ordered another one I think they were only six or seven dollars including postage and they had excellent service but I just plugged that in there and then I had the right resistor and I had the right connections here some of them are for the armature and others for the field that's very important with DC motors and so now these work like a charm and I don't have to use this big old nightmare box one question that I still have is that I would think these would heat up and someone said that they do need a uh, uh, cooling uh, what do we call it cooling fins on them to remove the heat so I'm gonna mount it on an aluminum plate and see if any heat develops if it does my idea was I'll probably cannibalize where is it? one of these you know and cut the fins off of it or I had a whole bunch of them from computers I don't know what happened to them but if necessary but I'm using these intermittently so I don't think I will develop a lot of heat but time will tell I've plugged in this motor and there's the controller and I'm working with it hot right now to illustrate don't do that make sure you have a cover and work safely you can really get zapped maybe even killed but I'm at 110 volts here but when I and I've got a little red tag here on the shaft so you can see it but there it is I can slow it way down. Now I know there'd be no torque at all at that speed and I'm not interested in running it at that lowest speed. And there we are at uh, maximum speed which is going to be around 1700 degrees. 1700 RPM. Alright, looking at the Stuart Warner tack here. That's at one of the slower speeds. You can see I'm at three or four hundred RPM. And as I slowly give it the juice, there we are at a thousand RPM. Fifteen hundred. These motors run smooth and quiet. And there I am at maximum speed, you know, just a little bit under 2,000. Rated at 20, 1750 RPM. I turn it off. And I hope to put uh, an electronic tachometer on, uh, on these machines so that we can talk about cutting speeds and all of that, both on the drill press and the bandsaw. Back over here at the Duro Drill Press, I had a series of videos on the pull gear. Make sure you watch those if you have not. And remember, this is a gear reduction unit that can be used on really any machine. And I, I rebuilt it, uh, restored it. And there's also a guy in Australia that is building one from scratch. So check out his videos. But this is a one-third horse split phase motor. And it doesn't have the starting torque sometimes to even uh, get going here because uh, there is some load imposed just by the gear reduction so sometimes it, it doesn't really start I need a capacitor start so I'll be changing motors when I find one but again the whole idea here was slow speed 
for large drill bits so you don't burn them up. I'm also going to do a video on hole saws because hole saws, large ones, need to be run at a very, very slow speed. So watch for that. So this is a whole group of videos. Again, I know I'm haranguing here, but about slow speeds. Now I was going to put the DC motor on this because I'm out in the garage. It's just a good place to film. It's nice and cool out here this morning. It's so early in the morning that no one is mowing yet, but I saw one neighbor. I think he saw me go to the garage, so he'll be cranking up his motor in spite uh, here presently. So, uh, I will probably also take the pull gear off and put it on the delta bandsaw for metal cutting, at least temporarily, because I just want to show you different ways of reducing the speed. Let me go down the basement real quickly with the camera and show you what I'm going to do in the next video. I know I'm doing nothing but talking here, but it's more or less an introduction to this whole series of videos. But the pull gear is strictly mechanical device with planetary gears in it as opposed to direct current motors which I'll be using here directly. It is no secret, it is no secret that the Walker Turner drill press is and has been my favorite drill press here in my shop for many many years. It's probably built in the 40s. I bought it from a teacher at the high school who retired and he had been the musical teacher and science teacher and then as a sideline he repaired musical instruments so when I bought it from him it, it was just perfect it just absolutely cherry even though it was over 50 years old uh, at the time and I've probably already had this for 35 or 40 years let me tell you a little story about Bob Schramm the former owner he was a really neat guy Bob Schramm had a, a auction or a sale before he he moved that was after he retired but uh, after he sold everything, he was doing some work in the attic. It's a ranch-style house. He had to go up through a crawl space uh, type of hole, you know, into the... And his wife said, no, no, Bob, don't go up there. You're too old and it's too hot. Do that at night. Well, he wouldn't listen. We never listened to our wives. So he got up there. He succumbed to the heat. He passed out. And uh, well, they thought he was going to die, so they called the fire department. They came, and they had to cut a hole in the roof real fast with a chainsaw to get him out of there. So his trying to save a nickel and whatever he was doing up there cost a fortune for a new roof, as well as um, uh, they had to take him to the hospital. He was okay, but I think he had a heat stroke. All right, enough of those stupid old stories. So that I don't get ahead of myself, I'm just going to say that this is the drill press that originally had the direct current motor on it. I had taken this off for 10 years. That was all off and in storage, but then I eventually had to put it back on when that controller failed. Includes uh, this wire to the switch. I think I'm going to get rid of this. Bob must have put that on. I never do use it. And I have already mounted uh, an aluminum plate, which is also my heat sink. I couldn't think of the word heat sink a little while ago. That's my heat sink, aluminum blah 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 and that's all ready to accommodate that uh, control box in the next video so join me when available and watch that video as I mount the DC motor on this uh, machine and do some test drilling with larger drill bits larger than what you would normally use that is over half inch so hope you enjoyed this brief video and continue to watch the whole series thank you so long for now